Hey, 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 we're back, we're black, we're brown. Ambition, 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 ambition. Normally I would say, hey, manager, how are you? But unfortunately, Mandy's out um, sick today. She's not feeling well. She's got, um, she actually lost her voice, but y'all got me. You know, I'm loud enough for the both of, both of us. Well, I'm super excited uh, because we have a special guest in studio today. Um, if you listen to our BAQAs, which air on Fridays, oh, look at me, that was a little rhyme, BAQAs airs on Fridays, um, you know that we answered a question from a gentleman named Mr. Kid, aka Kevin, um, about a uh, concern he had about his wife, um, uh, maybe not taking um, a job uh, that she was more than qualified for and why. And so we got Mr. Kevin together. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> we are here. We got him together, and um, his wife co-signed. She was like, "Who said that? I didn't think that I was ready. I may not want to do it." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it was awesome. And so we actually invited Kevin um, to come chat with us today, so we could talk money and relationships and and career and relationships and just all things. You know. So welcome, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, fantastic. I get to defend myself, okay? Right, because listening to y'all had me afraid for my life as I listened to that podcast. I was like, everything I said yeah, I was in love. And I'm listening back like, I ain't mean to say it like that. No, we know, we know. So maybe for those who didn't, you know, didn't get a chance to listen to that BAQ, we should put the link. I'm going to ask Imani, our um, producer, to put the link to that episode in the show notes so you guys can listen but maybe just give us a, a brief overview of like what what why you wrote in and um and what happened after yeah okay well first let me just tell you i really discovered you ladies listening to okay. cumulus radio and those wonderful um commercials y'all were doing <laughs> on cumulus and i was scrolling through facebook one day and i saw the budget needs the reads dr and as a DR devotee, I was like, well, let me go see what she's seeing, uh, saying about my boy DR. And I listened in and I was like, nothing she said was mm -hmm. off base or, you know, she made valid points. And then I just got okay. hooked from there. And uh, in terms of that letter, though, you know how your spouse comes home and they, and they complain mm -hmm. about work every day. In, anybody ever have that? Like every day there's a complaint, like they should do this. They should do that. Mm -hmm. They should do this. And that particular day I was sitting right where I'm sitting right now. And I had just had enough. I was like, <laughs> I need help because it, this isn't a toxic job. This isn't, you know, um, a overly stressful workplace. This is a place that loves her, mm -hmm. adores her, wants her to do the best and I was just confused, like, why aren't you taking this money? They are literally throwing money yeah. at you. Take it. And uh, when she didn't take it, I said, I need some help. And that's yes. when I wrote in. So what was our what do we tell you, Kevin? What do we what do we what do we have we had said to you that make you say? Oh. All right. So okay. let's go through it. So first, Kevin is a very common name, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> and if you recall, you were like, Kevin, I know you're not using your real name. <laughs> but uh, then from there, y'all gave me some of the most transformative advice. You know, my marriage wow. has leveled up. I'm, I'm not using hyperbole. I'm not speaking, you know, in exaggerations. We literally met, leveled up because the advice was, one, mm. shut up and listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And then two... The advice was understand that some people know that enough mm -hmm. is enough mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. Right. And listening to you talk about your experience with your mm -hmm. husband, Jarrell, it resonated so much with me because you were like, I was like, he needs to go get it. And he can be, that's me. That's me. I'm like, Tina, come on. They can do this. They can do that. You can do this. You'll run the whole department. Right. And and she's just like, no, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good. <laughs> right. So from there, uh, you guys really leaned in on talking to me about how my wife could be a role model mm -hmm. already. And that's why I really wanted to confront confront Mandra because I thought she was going to get me killed. When, no, because uh, I, because in your letter you said something to the effect that like you know 
you know, her taking this like higher level position, you know, would, you know, would just increase, would, would, uh, she was, that she would be a role model to your, you have a daughter, right? And then so Mandy. Yes. And I was yeah, speaking but then Mandy, Well, because we can only go by what you write now, Kevin. You know what I'm saying? We can't, we can't, we, we can't read minds and thoughts and prayers. And so Mandy was said um, that, you know, that basically your wife as she is, is already a role model. She doesn't need to have a big fancy job in order to do so. I know that wasn't your intention, obviously. We know, you know, but I wanted to, it's because when we just know that when we're answering these letters, um, Kevin, it's not just for the person writing in, it's for the whole of the audience who might be, you know, thinking, you know, thinking that, you know, that like somehow that just because you can do something means that you ought to, you know, be, that more is more yeah. or thinking that, you know, I ought to do something. So that way my children can then look up to me and we want to dispel those things. You know, we weren't trying to get on you. Well, we were a little bit, but we weren't trying to fully get on you because we also <laughs> wanted to say like, you know, let's dispel that you have to do, you know, you can be a stay at home mom and a role model. You can be a teacher and a role model. You can be, you know, a president and a role model, you know, but though it doesn't, being a role model is not about these external validating things, you know, it's really about how you navigate as a person through life. And so we just wanted to make that clear. So. And and thank you for saying that. And again, I was specifically talking about in relation to Mm -hmm. negotiations and, uh, but when you guys read it, I heard it in a whole different light and I began immediately apologizing, uh, (laughs) buying flowers, buying candy, (laughs) you know, groveling. Oh, you don't have to grovel, but I'm sure she liked the flowers and the candy. Do you know my wife? Do you know know my wife? Is Miss Tina in the room? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No, she's not here yet. So thank God. (laughs) Because she probably made me (laughs) grovel um, right now. But no. Well, Okay. She did okay. finally okay. listen okay. to the episodes. Say? And um, I think after I wrote that um, second mm-hmm. letter follow up where I was talking about how transformative mm-hmm. your advice was, I know she listened because she started treating me so Aww. much better. I mean, I I just felt Aww. like a king. And let me say again, for the record, she's mm-hmm. beautiful, <laughs> gorgeous, <laughs> 10 times smarter than me, and a gift okay. from God. I have okay. my soulmate, okay? So, but yeah, and then when I had written in for that second letter, mm-hmm. it took me a while. So it took mm-hmm. me about a month to send something back because we had some real transformative okay. conversations. I mean, because think about it. How many spouses out there feel the same way I did? Like, if you yes. would just... Mm -hmm. If you would just do this, if you would just do that. And just by being able to listen and really listen, not listen to tell her what to do, but listen to hear, oh, this is what Mm -hmm. you've been trying to say to me for the past six months. Like, I don't feel comfortable in my role. I miss my supervisor Mm -hmm. who left. I'm really ready for a change. Right. And that's when we started talking and. I started really listening and asking questions about what do you want? Mm -hmm. What's out there? What's possible? And so let me just tell you this. The laughter that you two had (laughs) on my second letter (laughs) still warms my heart to this day to know that I can bring out so much joy. Well, from my you know, pain. Yeah, and I wrote I that. Know, I wrote that. Because the letter <laughs> was like, hi, ladies, let me open with saying how wonderful, beautiful, amazing. We said that that Miss Tina was was standing over Kevin's shoulder like, yeah, wonderful, uh-huh, beautiful. Write that down. No, beautiful. Put that. So we were just teasing that that she coached him on the letter. Be like, uh-uh. Go ahead on and tell the ladies how amazing I am. I know we were just teasing, but I just love that like, well, share the aftermath. So you said that you know, it, it allowed you to take a step back and and rethink about, you know, what it is that how you were navigating with your wife. And and so like what one, what are some core lessons you learn and, and what's the aftermath of those lessons? OK, so the biggest lesson I learned is figuring out what environment your spouse mm-hmm. is comfortable advancing in. Because the thing about I learned about my wife is when she has a great Mm -hmm. supervisor who she feels Mm -hmm. supports her and can help her navigate, she'll jump into those roles. But when she doesn't have that, 
no amount of money, no amount of mm-hmm. praise, nothing is going to get her to step in there because she wants that support. And, you know, just thinking about other spouses going through this with me because you get so frustrated because I grew up in that area. If your boss offers you money, mm-hmm. you take it. Right. And you just work your way up. But for a lot of people, like you said, enough mm-hmm. is enough and they're grown. But learning. All right. What is it? that will make them move. And here's a question I have for you, because there's a difference for me in knowing when your spouse has enough and knowing when something's wrong. Right. And I think for me in this situation, I knew something was wrong. I just didn't know how to get to it and help her. And so I was curious about your thoughts on the difference between the two of those, like knowing when they're, they have enough and knowing really when something's well, wrong. One of the things I learned um, being with Jarrell for a number of years is that for both he and I is that sometimes um, even just asking the question, are you, are you just wanting to share or are you looking for feedback? You know, it's a, it's okay to ask that clarifying question because sometimes I just want to rant. I'm not looking for you to fix it. Um, oftentimes, if you're in a you know a, a male female relationship, men tend to want to fix. You know, and it's like, nah, I'm just I'm just Amen. talking. You know, like I just want you to listen. Don't go fix it. You know, <laughs> you know. So asking that clarifying question, um, but also bigger than like you kind of going in to kind of save the day is the safer the environment that you create for anyone to like be able to share, whether it's your child, your bestie, your spouse, whomever, creating a super safe environment, they will come to you, you know? But also, you also have to acknowledge it's not your job to fix it, you know? Like, not for adults, you know? And it's hard because I'm a fixer too, you know? I'm like, well, what's wrong? We could do this and we could do... And it's like, it's really not my job to fix it. It's my job to create a super safe environment where this person feels comfortable coming to me for anything. And if they ask for help, and certainly you could offer, you know, is this something you'd like me to help you with? You know? If they say no, allowing them to figure it out on their own, but always letting them know the light is still on. If ever you're wanting my help on this, I'm here. I know it can be hard to watch people struggle on their own, but that is a human existence, right? You like you are in charge yeah. of your journey and path. And so, so that's what I just say that like, you know, creating a safe environment and you have to reaffirm that environment. You can't just say it once. It's like, and it's not just saying it, it's, it's doing it because a safe environment looks like this. Like, let's just say, um, you know, for example, parent to child. If I tell my mom, you know, when I'm a kid or a teenager, like, you know, I was out with my friends and they started smoking. They were smoking. Were you smoking? Oh, I already know. I can't tell her nothing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But if I'm like, I was out with my yeah. friends, mom, and, you know, they were smoking. Okay. And, you know, they asked me to smoke. Okay. But I didn't want to, but I'm not really sure how to say. You see, like, it's, it's, it's like what yeah. you don't say oftentimes. It's not just what you do say. So creating that environment where it's like, okay, well, whenever I tell Kevin something, it's a safe space to just share. And if I do need help, he's there. And when I don't need help, he doesn't force help on me. This is a safe space. I think that's the best thing you could do in a relationship. That Darrell and I got really good at that right before he passed away, which is like really creating a super safe environment where you could share anything, you know, um, and not feel like the other person was going to um, get angry with you, judge you, or try to wrestle away control and fix it for you. Wow. It's it's interesting because that's the space we got into. And that's why I felt my marriage leveled up because, you know, it, it put us into that old marriage advice about fix it, mm-hmm. feel it or forget it. You know, that's something someone told me mm-hmm. a long time ago. Ask your wife, mm-hmm. literally, do you want me to fix it? Do you just mm-hmm. want me to feel your pain or do you want me to just listen, let you mm-hmm. rant and forget it? And in this space, she really wanted me to feel Mm-hmm. her frustration. And I was able to listen and, and listen with an open mind and not mm-hmm. answers, like you mm-hmm. said, not fixing. And what we began to talk about is, OK, I've got you. So we're well enough in life that if you are so stressed out that you mm-hmm. need to step away, I've got you. We're well enough that if you need to find another job with a pay cut just for your happiness, mm-hmm. I've got you. And that really resonated with her. And just to show you how good God is, uh, just 
man, that follow up was in August. Um, I think mm-hmm. it was September. She started getting calls See? about new jobs. She interviewed and she See? got hired in a See? new job uh, on October 31st, making okay. more money. Good. She's happy. She's coming home talking about See? all the great stuff at work rather than a pop or a mm-hmm. complaining. And just to see that smile on her face, because, again, my letter was really about my mm-hmm. wife is hurting and my I don't God. know how to help her. Please help me help her. And you ladies, I can't even tell you how mm-hmm. grateful I am, because honestly, I'm going to be honest. We have we had a great mm-hmm. marriage. I mean, mm-hmm. like outstanding to hear that that advice or and see what it has done to us and taking us to another level is just I mind love that. blowing. Oh so my gosh! Thank Honestly, you so Kevin, much. I love that. Like I say <laughs> that. Like I, I was just talking to a friend of mine who um, is struggling in his marriage, and um, he, we were just talking, and you know, he was just asking me like, how did you manage um, to grow from you know, like because I told him I was like, but by the time Gerald passed away, we had elevated from good to great. Um, in our marriage. And I said, well, a few things in the beginning, certainly it's, 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 it's a bit of a struggle. It's like dancing on a dance floor with a new dance partner. You're like stepping on each other's toes. You're not really sure which, what's the beat you going left, you going right. Like what, you know, so it's a little bit of a, and sometimes people yes. mistake that initial kind of like um, awkwardness for we must not met, be meant to be together. And it might be that, you know, you might have the wrong dance partner, but it could just be, you have to find the beat and the rhythm. You know, and so, yes, and yes. your own rhythm, because I, I will attest to that, because early in our marriage, we would argue over my mama said, yes. fold the towels this way. Well, yes. my mama said, fold the towels <laughs> that way. And it was like, OK, yes. well, how are we going and to fold That's the one of the biggest pieces of advice I told him. I said, when Jarrell and I decided, like, maybe it was like a year and a half in, I said, you know, babe, let's let's make um, a pact that we come up with our own rules, rules that we keep just between us. We're not sharing them with our family, friends, sister, cousin, mother. We make up our own rules for our relationship. And that's what we abide by. And it was so great and freeing because, you know, it's not like my, well, my girlfriend said we shouldn't do it like that. Nope, nope, nope. It was like, these are our rules. And if ever we're wanting to change them, it's just me and you that have to be, to get consensus. You know, so we, that was the key. We had to get consensus. And so we started making up rules. We, We had rules of disagreement even. For example, if we disagree, how do we want that to go? So we had a few rules for that. It was like one, so I grew up in a yelling household. And so like his was like, no yelling. I was like, okay, fine, I guess. Right? <laughs> Two, Jarrell had a kind of a potty mouth. I mean, he grew up in the hood. So he would just in common conversation be like, this mother effer said, can you believe that, babe? Which was fine in general conversation. But I told him when we're in disagreement, like cursing sounds yeah. crazy. So, you, you know, even though you might not be yes. cursing at me, that's what it feels like. So I was like, so erase yep. that from your memory when we're, when, so for me, it was no cursing. Even if you're not, you know, like he wouldn't curse at me, but like, you know, like I said, his normal cadence would just be like, you know, he's going to slip in a curse here and there. Right. So I'm like, but not wearing this when we're in disagreement. So he was both said, okay. And then the third one, which was a rule that transformed our relationship, um, is that we created a safe word. And the safe word for us was pineapples. And that was when we had went from like, if a disagreement went from helpful to hurtful, you know what that goes, you know, when you're like, yeah. you, you're you just trying to yeah. win at this point. And so yeah. our, so we, 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 we came up with this word pineapples and it was for, if I felt like, or he felt like, you know, you're getting to a place where it's not healthy anymore. Because sometimes, like, let's just say if I'm in the, I'm like, oh, I'm about to get him good. I'm about to get him good. He'll be like, pineapples, I'm right? And I'm win. like, what? Pineapples means everything stops. No more talking. You go upstairs, yeah. I go downstairs, we separate, you know? And it would be, it was so frustrating in the beginning because yeah. I'm like, oh, he only did that because I was about to win. You know, and so, and so I remember one time I didn't want to, I didn't want to respect pineapples. He said, oh, we now respect the pineapples because when you need it. And, but when I tell you, it was so helpful because what it did was it was like um, a shock to the system to say, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah. This is the person that you love. You're about to say something hurtful and harmful. And so it, it made us stop. And we had gotten so good at it that 
we didn't even have to say pineapples anymore the, the year he passed away. It was, we, it, we, I would internally self-correct. You know what I mean? So we got yeah. to a point, like my sister lived with us for like, like almost two years. And she was like, do you guys ever argue? And we really didn't. We, had ne- we didn't let it <laughs> escalate because we got trained that yeah. muscle of, is this hurtful? Is this helpful? You know, but I would always tell him, and, and for those of you in relationships, just even like, you know, with your kids or whomever, we would always remind ourselves that like, I would visualize that we were wearing the same jersey, you know, like, so if yeah. I have on the, the Bulls jersey and you have on a Bulls jersey, so what do I look like tripping you to sink a basket, right? Because if I, if you lose, right. the team loses, therefore I lose too, you know, Amen. like I cannot win over you because <laughs> if I win over you, then you lose and we all lose. And so even when we were like gearing up for like a disagreement, like I would, I would visualize, yo, you, yo, this man has on the same jersey as me. So like me winning is not yeah. really a win. I cannot win without him. We have to both win in this. And so that just helps a lot. And I just, I love to hear because the world will tell you that like there are no successful black relationships, you know? Um, and that like yeah. black love is dead or just love in general and um or that everything is struggle love whatever that means and you know i'm here to say that not that i know like a a, a ton but i know a good enough enough amount of people who are realistically happily married not that everything's always ra- rainbows and butterflies yeah. but realistically happily married meaning like they're like you Kevin and Tina where you're actively working on your marriage you are reaching consensus from a place of love and respect and that's why it gets stronger and better and so just I really commend you for that Hey 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 BA fam Squarespace is everything to sell anything Squarespace has the tools you need to get your businesses off the ground including e-commerce templates inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. We use Squarespace over here for brown ambition, okay? Whatever you sell, Squarespace has merchandising features to make your products look their best online, connect with your audience, and generate revenue through gated member-only content. Present your videos from YouTube, Vimeo, and Animoto on your Squarespace site. This is Clutch. See how your visits, unique visitors, and page use trend over time. Gain insights into the top traffic sources, products, device types, browsers, and operating systems by visit, okay? You own all the content you put on the Squarespace platform. That's critical. They offer one-click data portability, so head to squarespace.com slash brownambition for a free trial, okay? And when you're ready to launch, use offer code brownambition and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash brownambition, offer code brownambition. Hey, 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 BA fam. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, you know I know. Wouldn't it be great if we had a user manual that told us exactly how to navigate all those challenges? Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. I wish it did, y'all. A trained therapist is the next best thing. When I tell you therapy has saved my life, it has. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched three million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists, available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, which is okay, you can easily switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash brownambition. That's betterhelp.com slash brownambition. Honestly, get you some therapy. It is it is life changing. It's everything. Hey, 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 BA fam. Can we talk about notifications for a second? Who actually leaves those sounds on anymore? Well, besides that kind, that's another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. I use it for my Molly Moore merch, and I love it when I get my notifications, okay? Um, Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. Honestly, literally I have like five pending Shopify purchases. <laughs> like I, I, I support all these businesses and I, they use Shopify because everyone uses Shopify. And I love that I can log in and see like where my packages are, how much I spent. It's awesome. With Shopify, you'll create an online store in your vibe, discover new customers and grow the following that keeps them coming back. Shopify has all the sales channels sorted so your business keeps growing from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. 
Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash brownambition, all lowercase, okay? Go to shopify.com slash brownambition to start selling online today. That's shopify.com slash brownambition. Well, and thank you for sharing your journey. Uh, it has been so like heartwarming to see you go through your mm-hmm. journey of healing and sharing that with all of us. And honestly, listening to you, it, it inspires me to be a better husband because, you know, for those of us who have gone through loss, it really makes you really pay attention to the things that really mm-hmm. matter and, and focus in. So I just wanted to make sure before this conversation gets too far in to say thank you for sharing that and just say this for those who are going through and arguing like you, we had the benefit of a roommate for like the first three years of our marriage. So we couldn't really (laughs) shout at each other. We just had to like, like sort of talk our points out. And we would literally talk through him. He was like, well, don't you think I'm right? Don't you think I'm right? And I tell people all the time that really helped us in our marriage to understand how to have a disagreement Mm -hmm. instead of an argument. And at the end of the day, a house in discord, nobody wins, right? If you and your spouse are mad or one's mad, it's not good for anybody. But when you have that harmony and uh, I'm sorry, she just walked in. So I had to catch up. Come say hi real quick, girl. I know you shy. <laughs> I, I know like, yes, you shy. I got Come on, on real camera. quick, Tina. Let me see your beautiful face. Yes. Hi, beautiful yes. lady. How are you? Yes, I am <laughs> And she is, man, let me tell you what an extra uh, introvert she is. To do that, she probably might have to go take a nap now. You know what? Here's the thing that's crazy, too, because people, I am an extrovert introvert, meaning that, like, certainly I can, like, you know, put it on. But it's, it's quietly, I'm actually really, really shy. You know, and so after I do the thing, I got to take a nap because it's just so overwhelming. I have just learned to like work through my shyness, but um, no, so I totally understand. But yeah, no, but yeah. So in dealing with those situations, the biggest thing for me is, and a question I had for you is when you have these spouses who are alphas, and this just Mm -hmm. isn't a husband. Mm -hmm. We have wives who are the alpha Mm -hmm. or the breadwinner. And you have the spouse that may not be making, you know, as much as the other one, but you want to push them to go up Mm -hmm. to that next level. I mean, how do you have that conversation? Because a lot of times for me, my pushing is about the stress of trying to provide Mm -hmm. for everybody. Right. And trying to share that burden. And that's something I was able to Mm -hmm. communicate like. You know, we got mm-hmm. retirement coming up. Our daughter's in college. You know, we got another son in college. The more money we make, the mm-hmm. easier it'll be. So just having those conversations and recognizing when it's about mm-hmm. their needs and when it's about mm-hmm. your needs versus. No, I, I know exactly what you're saying, saying because it was the same with Jarrell and I. So okay. candidly, he never made over $60,000 a year. And, you know, mm-hmm. I could take upwards of seven figures home. You know, and so certainly there were times when I'm like, babe, you know what? You could do this. And and because you're a super for, for housing, you know, we could buy all these like apartment buildings and da, 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 you know, and he'd be like, um, OK, you know, and I'm like, ah, or, or like when I, when I first met him, because he's really smart, I was like, why don't you go back to school and you could get your degree in this. And, yeah. you know, and he's been like, oh, I don't know if I want to go back to school. And so I was so frustrated by that. In the beginning, um, until like I remember the first time I, I took my, um, he was my boyfriend at the time, to meet like my parents. And my dad was getting on him about going to school. And I didn't like it um, because I thought to myself, who are you to tell him how he ought to live his life? And then I had to look and say, oh, pick up that mirror tip. You don't like it. That's you, sis. You see how I look? You see how that look? You know? And I was like, oh. So this is what I learned when it comes to that, is that he and I, again, had to make up our own rules. So because especially the dynamic is, you know, like um, switch because he was the man and he wanted to be the provider, although I did not necessarily need a financial provider. So what we decided was that we were going to live within the means that he could provide. 
You know, and so so what that meant, like, so I remember we were living, so I moved in with him, um, uh, maybe like two years into like dating, and um, rent was super cheap. It was like, you know, because he, because he worked for housing, we actually lived like on campus, and it was like 900 bucks a month. Okay. You know, and so I was like, well, how much do you want me to put toward rent? He was like, well, I was paying it before you got here, I'm paying it now. I said, okay. Right. So he continued to pay like all the bills and I was building the budget. Nista. I mean, I was already like five years in the budget. Nista was making six figures, but I said, okay. Um, and since we weren't like married, you know, um, I didn't really start setting aside for both of us until like we got engaged. But when we got engaged, it was like, okay, you, how about this? You pay the bill. So we keep our life under what the, what the bills you can afford. And I will save and invest the money that I'm bringing in. And so, so the way it played out was I was like, he always wanted to be a homeowner and I'd already bought a condo when I was like in my twenties and, and I lost it to foreclosure. And I'm like, you know, I'd like a house too. And so we were looking for homes and it was hard because it was like, okay, we could only look for homes that his pay could cover. So some of the homes, you know, where we're looking at, I didn't really like, I was like, I don't like this one. I don't like this one. I don't like that neighborhood. But I realized, <laughs> well, maybe we're looking at it, um, in an incorrect way, right? So the the his his main desire was I should be able to continue to pay our bills. I want that. If you don't want to do budget Easter no more, you don't have to. I got you. So then I thought, well, babe, what if we do this? A foreclosure came up on the market. It was one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and I said, what if? We purchased that home cash with the money I have saved and invested for us because my job was to save and invest, your job to pay the bills. What if we purchased that home, that $180,000 home with that money, which we did, and then we renovated it? Now I can get the house that I want in the neighborhood that I want. And guess what? We don't have a mortgage. So, like, so, so the oh, monthly bills that. actually decreased. And so we found ways like that to navigate versus me saying, go make more money. You know, which is, which is, you know, it wow. was more so how do we make the money that we do have work for both of us? And so he loved the fact that he was like, yo, I pay all the bills in the house because, you know, which, like I said, there's no mortgage and same thing. That's how we bought our cars too. So I purchased a car for myself wow. and then his car was like getting old. And I was like, well, why don't we get you a car with the money that we have in our savings that I've been saving? So we purchased his car, purchased my car, no car note, but he paid the insurance. You know? Wow. And let me get some of that if you don't mind, because that is good stuff, boy. And I want to just jump rope in there. Uh, but you are dead on because like you are the textbook example. Like back in the 90s, mm -hmm. I used to read Essence, you know, full <laughs> disclosure. And literally Essence would talk about these black women who were making these mm -hmm. six figure salaries dating people who didn't have mm -hmm. that college degree or were working in the skills and the trades and how mm -hmm. to balance that and make that work. And now you see mm -hmm. that more and more where people are making it work. And the trick really is how do we go from yeah. we yes. to us, right? And still make people feel like yes. they're valued yes. in the relationship because you allow Jarrell to still keep that, yes. that protector, provider, manhood thing that we all strive to give. I want to protect her. That's why I'm mm -hmm. always trying to fix it. I want to protect my daughter. That's why I'm always signing her up for Mandy's <laughs> courses and pushing them on her. Right. I want to protect and provide. And by allowing us to do that, man, I can't even tell you how happy that yeah. makes all of us. And I hope people I mean, are listening honestly, to the like, advice. He would Go tell ahead. me all the time, like, babe, thank you so much for never making me feel like, you know, feel bad or feel less than or feel, you know. Um, cause sometimes I'd have to remind him, I'm like, babe, you know, we're millionaires. He was like, we are, I'm like, do you look at our bank account, <laughs> our investment account, you know? And so, um, because I mean, he was still wearing his Brown uniform to work as a super, you know, yeah. like, and so, and, and, and somebody might be listening, but like, so you lived less than a life. I said, it, it didn't feel less than to me. Cause for one, one, if you know me, mm -hmm. like Jarrell's not here, I'm still in the same house. I'm still wearing my targets best. Like that's yeah. my, like I, it was yeah. a fit for me because I was already living in that way. So if I'm going to splurge, so, so the things that I would pay for for myself to splurge were vacations. You know, I, I didn't have the expectation he would pay for my vacations. Um, I also looked after my parents. That was a bill that he didn't, you know, take care of. Cause I was like, these are my parents. This is my responsibility. I gave them money every month. Um, and so it allowed us like 
creating things like that, like creatively figuring out how do we do this dance so you, I can honor the fact that you are the protector pr provider, but this is something that I'd like for us to have. And so there's no right or wrong. That's what I mean about creating your own internal rules for yourself and your, your relationship. Yes. And if you can do that, you know, like I said, I, you know, I made a significant amount of money and yet, you know, like, I, like, for example, it wasn't until I was in college that I realized that my mom made way more than my dad. I never knew. She was a nurse and he was an accountant. And I was just like, she was like, with the overtime or whatever, she was making almost double. And I didn't know. Yeah. Because also, too, same in that, you know, it didn't, they didn't let it affect the dynamics of their relationship, you know? And so I just think, I, th I think the, the rule is there is no rules except for the ones that you create for yourself, you know, when it comes to your how you navigate your relationship, especially when it comes to to money. So I'll say for you, um, Kevin, when it comes to you and Tina, you know, her, the, on, the only solution is not just Tina got to make more money. You know, I want you to explore yeah. what are some other solutions? Because two, you have to get to the root of what are you really saying? What are you really wanting? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I want safety and I want security and I want to have enough. For so, okay. So is it Tina got to make more money or the money we do make, do we manage that better? Is You see what I mean? Oh, wow. It might be that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Like, you know, it might be yeah. that. It might be like, you know, are there some things that we really don't need that actually we could put that, put that money toward retirement? You know, are there some ways to cut back? You know, it might be that. I don't know. Only you would know, you know. No, you know? And so on. like, so, you know, I don't want you to just in anything, don't get so stuck that the only solution is dot, 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 dot. There's never just one solution, especially when it comes to your finances, you know, that you want to explore like what other ways, like is the only way for us to get a house that Jarrell has to qualify for a mortgage? No, it's we found the foreclosure, paid for a cash. Now we ain't got to worry about a mortgage. You see what I mean? So there is alternative solutions, I do. you know, for you to navigate, but get to the root of what you're really saying that you want and then put both of your heads together to figure out what are different ways to achieve the same solution. And so, yeah. Wow. And, and you know, that's such good advice. And you've got to, I have got to be able to sit with myself and say, what am mm -hmm. I really needing? Why am mm -hmm. I pushing for this? We make more than enough money. And I have learned from the past that when we used to make more money and then go out and mm -hmm. get a new car payment and lose all that money mm -hmm. that we made, <laughs> you know, but it comes down to can you manage mm -hmm. what you have? Because increase can come through Ooh, decrease. Child. And I've learned that listening That's what to I'm you guys. About. We about to see the tambourine. <laughs> come on. He said increase. <laughs> Don't make right? me shout. Can come right. through decrease. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, Kevin, this has been. Hey, if my pastor <laughs> listens, I just gave you a sermon for Sunday. I love that. <laughs> Kevin, you are awesome. Any last words for the people? You know what? The last word I would say is one of the reasons why I was so happy that y'all called me on is I know that there are so many spouses going through the same thing that I'm going through and it's causing stress on your marriage. And the more we talk about it, the more we're able to deal with it. So I want to thank you for having me on. Thank you for talking to me. I just gave away two copies okay. of your book last <laughs> week. I'm giving away three copies at Christmas and uh, I'm about to give my daughter that Good. Mandy scripts <laughs> for <Good>. negotiating. Thank <laughs> you. So now get some gear yeah. so we can buy well, a new coffee mug. If you go to um, brownambitionpodcast.com, I feel like we have gear on there. Take a look. I, I'm almost positive we have some. Okay. All right. So brownambition.com, yeah. get your gear. <laughs> I will go there asking everybody to go with me because I'm your you. biggest fan and now I'm promoting yeah, your Yeah, thank merch. you. So honestly, Gavin, you are an awesome <laughs> guest. Thank you so much. I mean, I know you're a private person, but if you do have any social media that you mind people following or anything, you don't have to. I'm just like... <laughs> Okay. No, I do, but you're going to laugh because you know how you have that 90s uh, <laughs> email address? Uh, well, uh, my uh, <laughs> my Instagram name is oh, Gigolo Tony. G-I-G-O-L-O-T-O-N-Y. <laughs> hey, hey, it's it's a 1980s rapper okay. from Miami. It's a Look okay. up Smurf Rock. All right. You'll Gigolo Tony. All right. <laughs> Go uh, ahead and follow him on. And you'll see some of the best salads. And uh, you can hit me up at Facebook, Kevin Kidd. 
Uh, we do a lot of great things from uh, coaching youth soccer and empowering mm-hmm. girls to bringing after school programs to youth in detention. That. So you're welcome. Thank Kevin you so Kidd, much. K-I-D-D, for those of you listening. Gigolo Tony. For those of you who know what he's talking about, tweet me. Right? Who's from who's from Florida of a certain <laughs> age? Okay. <laughs> there you go. That yes. Miami base, right? So thank you so much and thank you for inspiring me. Hopefully this will be the first in my journey to realize my dream of becoming a motivational speaker through your example. And just, I I love y'all so much and I'm going to stop because I will gush on for another five minutes. Thank you, Kevin. It was really nice meeting you. And tell, tell Tina I said hello again. I will. And she said (laughs) hello back over there from (laughs) the corner. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, 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 BA fan. We're on YouTube. Woohoo. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, why don't you go over to that little bell icon and just tap that for us. Show the BA fam how much you love us. And that way you'll also get notifications when new videos drop. Also share the channel with a friend. We're always like, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. And thank y'all so much again for all the support.